I'm coming live to you today with my cute little grandson. Isn't he adorable? He says hello. He says he loves math. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do my favorite today, Pythagorean Theorem. Today is April 9th, Thursday. And this is one of my favorite things to teach. We're going to have the very basic today, and then we'll do more complicated word problems the way the GED will be. Okay, so to start with, let's do some background information. We talked about this just a few days ago. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees. If you take a right angle and turn it into a triangle, you have a right triangle. By the way, be taking notes, and if you need to pause, pause at any time. Now, three squared, you need to know this, and we just did this a few days ago also really means three times three, not three times two, three times three. You take the three, you write it twice, and you get nine. Seven squared is seven times seven, which is 49. Five squared is five times five, which is 25. Now, we're gonna do um, the square root of 36. So this is doing the opposite. This is thinking to yourself, what times what gives me 36 where the numbers are exactly the same? So if you know your perfect squares, this will be easy for you. One times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, five times five is 25, and six times six is 36. I hope I said those right. I kind of did it like routine. Like you're driving down the road and you forget that you made, how you made it all the way home. That was kind of how I was doing that. Okay, what times what gives me 81 where the numbers are exactly the same? Nine, nine times nine. What times what gives me four where the numbers are the same? The answer is two. And what times what gives me one? I hope you got that right, it's one. All right, so that's a little background. By the way, my two people that caught me on spelling yesterday were Tiffany and Jasmine, and I checked this like three times. I spelled it right. All right, your turn. I have four questions. They're written a little differently. Remember, you're taking notes as we go, and you're pausing when I give you challenge questions. So pause it right here and answer these four questions. I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, so you're back. What is the square root of nine? Now I wrote it differently than down here, and that is because this program I'm using right now, I can't use mathematical symbols or I haven't been able to figure it out. So you might see it written this way. I really just mean this. What is the square root of nine? So you're thinking in your head, what times what gives me nine? Three. And then 10 squared, we know, means 10 times 10, which is 100. Oops, sorry. But it might be written this way. What is 3 squared? Because once again, I'm having problems with mathematical symbols. So 3 squared really means this, and 3 times 3 is 9. And the square root of 121, drum roll, hopefully you got that, is 11. All right, so that brings us the, to Pythagorean Theorem. That was the background information you needed to know. Okay, this is Pythagorean Theorem. We have a right triangle. We have a, this is called a leg. Don't know why, I would call it a side. And this is called a leg. And this is key, this is called hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the side opposite of the right angle. So I've always been taught to look at the right angle, draw an arrow to show that this is C or the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the largest measurement. So if you're taking notes right now, it's across from the right angle and it is always the largest measurement. It doesn't matter which way I turn it, across from the right angle is the hypotenuse and is the largest um, measurement. I think I said angle a minute ago. I didn't mean to. It is the largest measurement. This will be the largest side. So I have A, B, C. Really doesn't matter if I mix these two up when I do my formula in just a minute, but it really matters about the C. So let's do that. If you need to pause it, write all that information down. Okay, here we go. 
So, I'm giving this um, three, four, and I'm missing this. Here's my formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Remember, always across from the right angle is my hypotenuse, and we call it C. So that means I do not know the C. The C is what I don't know. So it doesn't really matter if I call this A or this A, this B, this B. I'm just gonna say A equals B equals, but it really matters about the C. So A is three, so I'm gonna put it right here. B is four, and they're both squared, equals C squared. Well, three squared is nine, and four squared is 16, and they equal C squared. So all I've done is say three times three is nine, four times four is 16. Now I add those up and nine plus 16 is 25. So that's what I have. But wait a minute, I knew the three before I squared it. I knew the four before I squared it. So I wanna know this before it was squared. So I wanna find the square root. So I'm saying to myself, what times what gives me 25? And hopefully you said five. So this is five. Now let's do our check. Hypotenuse is always my biggest measurement. Is this the biggest side? I have a three, a four, yep, five is the biggest. Okay, let's do this one. I believe you should always write your formula. So I'm gonna write that first. Okay, a squared is, I mean, I'm, let's label it. This is a, this is b, across from the right angle is c. So a is 12 squared, b is 16 squared equals c squared. Well, 12 times 12 is 144. And 16 times 16, and yes, you absolutely can use a calculator, but this is 256. When I add those up, I get 400. Now I need the square root because I need this before it's squared, I need this before it's squared, so I gotta get the square root. And I'm thinking to myself, what times what gives me 400? And the answer is 20. So I come over here and I say C is 20. And is that true? Is that my biggest measurement? Yes. Okay. Now I'm looking and I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, so I have one more to do. And I don't have a whole lot of space here. So this is my C. This is what I don't know. Sorry, always technical difficulties. So I know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm gonna call this a, I'm gonna call this b. So two squared plus seven squared equals c squared. Two squared is four, seven times seven is 49 equals c squared. Add those up, 51 equal, ah, uh, no, 53, sorry, equals c squared. The square root of 53 is 7.937. If I said, hey, round that to the nearest tenth, you would stop here. The three would say, leave the nine alone, and the answer would be 7.9. So I had this bright idea of showing you how to use the square root on an Apple phone, which is my phone on my calculator, but then it hit me I can be filming if I'm using my phone. I'm sure one of you young people could figure it out, but I couldn't, so. All right, this is for you to do. Turn it, um, put it on pause, and we'll be back. Okay, so I'm gonna say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That is three squared plus four squared. You know what, this is the one you just Okay, hold on. Your turn. These are two for you to do. Okay, I hope you paused. I forgot to tell you to pause. If you didn't pause, pause, and then I'll see you back here in a second. All right, so here we go. I got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm missing my hypotenuse, which we're gonna call C, so I know my A and I know my B. Six 
squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. Add that up. I get 100. Now remember, I need to get the square root of 100. What times what gives me 100? 10. So this is 10. And yes, that is the longest measurement, so I did good on that one. Here we go. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A, B, 2 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. Add that up. Get the square root. And I get 5.385. And let's say I said round this to the nearest hundredth. So if I said round it to the nearest hundredth, I'd draw my line there. Here's my tenth. Here's my hundredth. The five says bump that up. So I would end up with 5.39. I come over here and say my hypotenuse is 5.39. Is that the biggest measurement? Yes, it is. Okay, now this is only part A of Pythagorean theorem. Part B is when we know the hypotenuse, but we don't know one of the legs over here. But what I've learned, if the video is more than 12 minutes, you guys don't like to watch it. So we're going to stop there. I'm going to give you some practice questions in the quiz. And um, I will see you back here tomorrow for the other part, part B of Pythagorean theorem. Have a great day. And oh, go outside. It's so beautiful outside.